We have for once a nice heartwarming story in the conference realignment world, Washington state and Oregon state in some ways, as the kids say, get the bag in a settlement with the PAC 12, the details coming up here in this video. Welcome into the channel. I am John Kurtz here on this channel. We talk college football, conference realignment, college basketball all day, every day. Make sure you're subscribed if you are not live shows on Wednesdays and Sundays with people from all corners of the college football world, ton of action in here. It is very lively really would encourage you to get in here subscribe click the bell so you know what it is that i'm going live if you could like the video i would really appreciate that and let me know what you think in the comments about this pac-12 settlement uh good deal bad deal were you surprised and what is the future of the pac-12 slash pac-2 at this point because this is obviously all about washington state and oregon state and i i must admit i feel good that Washington State and Oregon State have had a good like 10 days or so here in terms of getting more money. They were able to negotiate a little bit more money out of the college football playoff to basically up their payout from the average independent not named Notre Dame, which I was happy to see. Uh, and then the details of this settlement have come out to be very encouraging for Oregon State and Wazoo. So I will read to you from a couple of articles, first from ESPN, then from Sportico. We begin with the worldwide leader in sports, ESPN. Uh, Oregon State and Washington State finalized a settlement over financial distributions with the 10 schools leaving the Pac-12. The departing schools will have $5 million withheld during the 2024 fiscal year for a total of $50 million under the deal announced Monday. So that's the first part of it. The headline to this basically would be that the, the Pac-2 got $65 million out of this total. So this is a piece of it. $5 million of what would typically have gone to the 10 schools this year had they stayed in the league will be withheld. That goes into the quote-unquote, I guess you could say, war chest that has been talked about a lot in this scenario. Like, what will the war chest be for Oregon State and Washington State? Uh, the departing schools will also each pay a $1.5 million supplemental contribution to the conference that will be used by the remaining schools to navigate an uncertain future. There's a lot that goes into an uncertain future. I know you might look at that on the surface and say, well, okay, of course, they're going to be making less money from their TV deal. Just a little bit of extra money to kind of help figure out the bills, keep the lights on. Well, all that's going to happen. But the other thing you have to remember is that we have lawsuits going on, like the house lawsuit, which in the NCAA could result in like back pay in an antitrust suit for student athletes who did not get NIL. Uh, that's the general idea behind that. And that could leave schools on the hook, each individually paying millions of dollars. So Oregon State and Washington State wanted to make sure that they were okay with that. I mean, there's the Holiday Bowl lawsuit that's going on. You know, remember when we detailed it on this channel, but it was like every day there was another negative headline uh, for the Pac-12 and stuff like that happening. There, there are a lot of liabilities. That would be the term to just lump it all under. A lot of liabilities for the Pac-12 that have to be worried about for Oregon State and Washington State. And that was a part of the idea behind that money. The departing members will not be entitled to any revenue generated after this year, and they will have no vote, direction input, or other power with the conference's use, allocation of expenditure of the supplemental contribution. That's a lot of words, um, but not getting any vote, direction, or input uh, over the conference's use uh, that had been another hot topic, which of course was like, you know, people were worried from the PAC two from Oregon state and Washington state about them still technically having board seats, being able to vote on things, not going to be able to do that. Now the settlement it says was agreed to in principle late last year. And I do remember that coming out at the time. We just didn't get a lot of the details. Now, apparently it is finalized. So we do get some of those details and, uh, here's what, this is a Kirk Schultz quote. I believe this is a Kirk Schultz quote. No, oh, no, this is the statement. Here's the statement from Washington State and Oregon State. Quote, we are pleased to finalize an agreement with Oregon State and Washington State that provides support for all our student athletes while ensuring an equal distribution of the vast majority of funds earned by all 12 schools during the academic year. Um, the 10 schools that are leaving, uh, well, that was the 10 schools that are leaving. My apologies here, people. That was the 10 schools that are leaving. Under this agreement, our schools will have the right to vote on matters that affect all 12 schools this year. Well, Oregon State and Washington State will have control over future conference revenue and decisions. Okay, nice enough little statement there from the 10 outgoing members. Um, the conference's remaining members have a scheduling alliance with the Mountain West for at least 2024, possibly beyond. And they will join the West Coast Conference as affiliate members in every sport except football and baseball the next two years. Here's a little bit more from Sportico, who does 
total all this together, they say on paper, uh, that's a $65 million concession to Oregon State and Washington State. Uh, going back to that math earlier, the $5 million each school leaves on the table from uh, the revenue that they're not going to get, and then the $1.5 mil payment. Um, $65 million concession to Oregon State and Washington State, which were left behind when the rest of the conference chose to depart for other leagues in the middle of nationwide realignment. In reality, the two schools will see a lot more than that. So this is good context. It's going to be a lot more than just the 65 mil because Oregon State and Washington State will also keep the bulk of future Pac-12 revenue. The agreement states that outside of future income that was supposed to be paid prior to the 10 teams leaving this summer, all future Pac-12 revenue will stay with the conference. So for instance, you might be saying, all right, what... What money is that? They're going to be gone. What money is that that would have actually been entitled to them? Tens of million dollars that the Pac-12 will be paid in the next six years for success in previous NCAA tournaments. Uh, The NCAA rewards teams for their tournament success in a complex way called units, which pay out for six subsequent years. As a very rough proxy, each game played by a Pac-12 team in the tournament is eventually worth about $2 million over the course of those six years and the Pac-12 is still yet to be paid fully for dozens of those units. So wins for, say, Arizona. It says, hey, that means Arizona's run to the Sweet 16, three units so far, and units earned by fellow departing members, Colorado, three, Oregon, two, uh, will all stay with the conference. So the more these teams keep winning in the NCAA tournament, that's ka-ching, ka-ching for Oregon State and Washington State. So they will certainly be rooting for all of their conference mates, or if you want to call them former conference mates, They will be rooting for all of them because that means more money in their pocket the way that it is delayed when you get the income off of that. So that is a win. And if you go back, I'm actually going to dip into uh, the John Wilner pot a little bit here from the Pac-12 hotline. If you just go back the last like week and a half, he chronicled uh, all the things that have happened here. NCAA tournament revenue with four teams winning five games. Uh, The conference is guaranteed at least $18 million. So that's what he has totaled up so far from the NCAA tournament winnings. Um, College football playoff revenue shares, uh, $3.6 million annually for three years for two teams. Total climbs close to $21.6 million. That was the number that was basically an upgrade given to Oregon State and Washington State. They're not going to be getting the like $12 million a year, for instance, that a Big 12 team would get. But they're also not going to be getting less than a million that your average independent that is not named Notre Dame out there would be getting. They're going to get 3.6 annually uh, for three years for two teams, which climbs to 21.6 million. So he says, Hey, they just made 39.6 million because of all of that. And uh, this was written, I believe before um, the actual settlement details came out too. So you throw that on top of it. A lot of money, a lot of money here that has come into play. We're talking, although I think there is some overlap with that NCAA tournament stuff potentially, but like, you know, nice, cool 90 to a hundred million dollars that we're talking about to be planted in the war chest for Washington state and Oregon state to to try to get things figured out. Um, Yeah. I'm going to just end it there. There's a little bit more in the details of the NCAA tournament here from John Willer, but I think you guys get the point. This has been a win. Ultimately, Washington State and Oregon State have a lot of problems still to deal with. Their future still up in the air, still going to be hard to compete uh, with teams that are in even the ACC or the Big 12 falling behind them. But this at least leaves them not just completely and totally high and dry. It will help bridge the gap a little bit, help mitigate some of the liabilities that are there for the conference. So small wins where you can take them and – I know people say, hey, you're in the Big 12. You helped in their conference. I mean, I, I look, I very much feel for Washington State and Oregon State, and I want them to get all the Ws that they can, especially over their outgoing conference mates now in light of all of this. Let me know what you think in the comments uh, about this deal for Washington State and Oregon State and uh, how well you think they can compete with some of this money in the bag now. Uh, let me know in the comments, like the video. I would really appreciate that. Uh, John dash Kurtz dash four on Venmo. If you want to support the channel there, thank you for being here and I will talk to you all soon. Take care.